Hello everyone, the UK has set a target to bring down our carbon footprint to net zero carbon by 2050. So joining me today to tell us what Phoenix is doing to tackle this challenge is our sustainability manager, Adam Pope. Um, hi Adam, thanks for joining me today. Um, hi, my first question is, what exactly is net zero carbon? Yeah, that's a good question and the fundamental one. So um, we know that uh, human activity over the last couple of hundred years has produced uh, carbon emissions or, or greenhouse gas emissions, I should say. These emissions uh, help to heat the atmosphere, uh, which brings about a global warming and climate change. Um, so to combat this uh, climate change, which can be a threat and probably will be a threat to uh, the environment, to the ecosystems and, and potentially human existence on the planet without being too dramatic. Um, governments have made agreements and domestic laws to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that human activity produces. So the most significant one for the UK is the Climate Change Act of 2008, which has been amended to mean that we must balance our carbon emissions in the entire UK to net zero carbon. So that means we balance the emissions we produce with those we remove, basically. Okay, sounds really complex. So how can Phoenix become greener? Well, um, we've all got a part to play in, in uh, working towards net zero carbon, both as an organisation and as individuals, either residents or, or, or staff members, towards uh, making our community greener uh, and cleaner and playing our part. So um, for Phoenix, I guess the most fundamental part of um, uh, carbon emissions are our properties we own. We uh, 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 rent or manage 6,000 properties or so, and all those properties in some way or another will be producing carbon emissions, you know, through activities like keeping them warm and heating hot water for residents, etc. So we need to look at how we can uh, reduce the carbon emissions of our housing stock. But there's other um, activities that as an organization we undertake which has impact on the environment so just our day-to-day -day management of properties etc uh, we can look at how we can reduce our carbon emissions and our you know impact on the environment through our activities okay sounds great what would you say is the biggest challenge to ensure that we do reduce our carbon footprint well i guess um I think the biggest challenge, as I've, as I've said, is that our biggest uh, source of emissions is our homes. And uh, most of our homes were built 100 years ago in the 1920s uh, uh, when energy efficiency or carbon emissions wasn't a thing. You know, those homes were originally being heated with coal fires in each room, effectively. Um, and now we've moved on to uh, gas central heating, combi boilers, etc. Um, so I think the big challenge is to look at our homes, which are, you know, old, most, mostly, and how we're going to bring them to uh, net zero carbon. And that's going to be a number of steps along the way, I believe, to uh, get to that point. Yeah, then that's, I know that you've recently, or you're working on your sustainability strategy, which would highlight all of those phases in the background um, and the objectives of what we're trying to do. But I guess, how can staff and residents help us become greener? Well, um, I think we've all got a part to play to be, uh, to be greener. So if I'm a, a resident or occupying a house, which obviously I do and everyone does, whether you're a Phoenix resident or not, we can all play a part by thinking about um, the products we buy, how we dispose of them, um, whether they're energy efficient or not, whether they're coming from a sustainable source, some of the activities we take in the house, um, such as heating it and throwing away our rubbish and buying this, uh, recycling as much as possible, not wasting food, thinking about how we travel around, can we do it in a more sustainable way? walk or cycle rather than cat driving, perhaps using public transport more. There's a whole measure of ways as we as individuals can 
start working towards a more sustainable future. Mm. As an organization in Phoenix, I think we've got a lot of learning to do because it's going to be a fundamental change of how we operate as an organization to deliver the net zero carbon goals. Yeah. So we've got to start thinking about all our activities. And as I said, especially how our existing homes operate uh, to achieve net zero carbon goals. OK. Um to me at Phoenix, you are a sustainability guru. <laughs> so I feel like it runs through your veins. But I know that we've got a lot of initiatives to help our residents kind of understand um, sustainability and what they can do. Can you give us a little um, highlight of what, what we're offering? Yeah, so at the moment, um, a lot of our uh, initiatives focus on helping residents save energy and save money through uh, uh, paying for their fuel bills, etc. So during the heating season between, well, this year it'll be between August and March, we'll be holding our energy advice cafes. Now, these are run by the Phoenix uh, energy champion, Sharon O'Connor, who's actually a Phoenix resident. Um, so she helps other residents save money primarily, but also talk about ways to save energy and be more sustainable. So she might find cheaper tariffs for people to... Uh, sign up to and spend less money on their fuel bills. She'll offer hints and advice about saving money and uh, measures you can do that will save energy and everything. The more energy you save, the more money you save. And that sounds that's like a key takeaway for me. Absolutely. Um, do we are we working on any innovations or are, are there any innovative innovative measures that we're taking at the moment? Yeah, so I think the most significant one relates back to what I was saying about getting our housing stock uh, ready to be net zero carbon. So we're going to be undertaking a couple of pilots in the coming years, which is going to look at what we need to do to our homes, which I've said 100 years old. So we've got to significantly change them to become net zero carbon. And I guess that's going to take uh, three different steps, which we're going to do on a pilot to help us understand as an organisation what the changes are going to be in the future. So the first step, of that journey will be to significantly reduce the energy demand of the homes. Now we do this by increasing the insulation on properties. So though a lot of our properties may have insulation in the lofts and perhaps in the walls, we're going to have to enhance that, perhaps put insulation on the floors as well, look at the doors and windows and increase their energy efficiency. At the same time, we need to reduce the uh, what we call the uncontrolled uh, air infiltration in a property, but known as drafts to me and you, to make our homes much uh, more airtight as well as much more insulated. But of course, when we make it more airtight, we've got to think about how we have how we enhance the controlled ventilation to uh, ensure that we don't have issues of condensation and mould. So that's the first step. It's called the fabric first approach. So you look at the fabric of the building and you improve it significantly in order to lower the energy demand of the property. So a property that's been treated fabric first will require much less energy to keep it warm, to heat it up and keep it nice and warm during the winter months than a property, than an existing property. And once we've done that part, we've reduced the energy demand, we can then think about decarbonisation of the heat. So that means we've got to look at and um, probably take away in the future our gas boilers and replace it with some other low carbon source likely to be electrical systems um, at the moment likely to be heat pumps now these take the heat from either the air or the ground compress it magnify it if you like and use it to uh, to ramp up that heat and use it to heat our homes so that will significantly reduce the carbon emissions because Electricity will become more and more green from, you know, renewable sources like wind turbines, wind farms, solar, solar panel farms, that kind of thing. The third step is about sort of trying to get our homes towards uh, net zero carbon as much as possible. So these homes are still likely to produce CO2 emissions, but we can kind of balance that in a number of different measures. It may be putting systems on roofs like panels that can generate electricity, or it could be that uh, in combination, I should say, with uh, enhancing our green spaces, perhaps making them areas we plant more trees, more shrubs, because those those plants will absorb CO2 or other measures. 
So it's a three step approach. That's the big initiative we are starting uh, to help us understand what we need to do to all our homes between now and um, 2050. OK, how are we going to measure all of this? So um, this year, as part of our strategy, we've undertaken a independent environmental audit of Phoenix. Phoenix's properties, Phoenix's activities as an organization. Um, you can't really make changes when you, you can't change what you can't measure. So we really need to baseline our uh, activities in a, uh, how we're operating in a sustainable, environmentally uh, conscious way. Baseline that so we get an idea with this audit about how we're doing and idea of what we need to do to improve. So this won't just uh, cover houses, but as I said, it will cover all our activities we take to service our houses and, and uh, help look after our residents and make sure they're living in you know, healthy, comfortable, decent homes. Thank you, Adam. You've given us a, a whistle stop around uh, of what we are going to be planning to do to ensure that we do reduce our carbon footprint. Um, if anyone is interested in finding out more, please visit our website um, that you will find the sustainability strategy there and more info and keep an eye out for events as well for, for our residents. Um, thank you so much for joining me today, Adam. It's been great to learn more um, and look forward to seeing what we can do. Yep, it's going to be an exciting journey and it's a journey of discovery that I think we're all going to be on uh, between now and 2050 and a really important one to safeguard everyone's futures. So thanks for listening, joining in.